Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now, in our first tutorial, we covered the very basics of a Solidity contract, as well as very simple getters, setters, and member attributes. In this tutorial, I'm going to go into inheritance within Solidity. Now, inheritance is something that you might not know too much about if your primary uh, sort of programming languages are Java, Script, and C. Because obviously, with C, it's a non-object oriented language, and JavaScript doesn't really have a true structured way to do uh, sort of inheritance. Now, I know there are ways of, of mocking inheritance within JavaScript, but I'm not really going to get into that too much. Now, with Solidity, we can look at essentially three aspects of inheritance. Now, the first aspect I'm going to cover is a general extension of functionality from one contract to the next. So to jump straight back into what we had in our last tutorial, which was my first contract. Now I'm going to extend the functionality of my first contract, but not within that contract. What I'm first going to do is define a new contract. And this contract is simply going to be called bank. Now to extend the functionality and member attributes of bank to my first contract, uh, in a lot of programming language, you simply specify the word extends, but in Solidity, we specify the extension using the, uh, the identifier is. So for instance, contract, my first contract is bank. So now any functionality that exists in bank will also exist in my first contract. So let's add some functionality to bank. Now, we want to add some attributes to the bank, which we don't want my first contract to access. Now, we can go around that with one of two ways. Now, for instance, if you were going to add something to bank that you wanted to protect from the outside world, but you did want my first contract to access, you would make that essentially an internal method or an internal attribute. Sorry. Now, to do that, all you'd simply do is say define a variable. So, for, in this case, you int um, internal and um, my internal value. Now, my internal value can be accessed from my first contract, but it can't be accessed from anywhere else. Now, in common programming terms, that access modifier is also known as protected. Um, I The reason I covered that first was because of Every other access modifier in Solidity is the same as a lot of other programming languages. So in other programming languages, you get public, private, and protected. In Solidity, you have public, private, and internal. So that's kind of why I just covered that one first. So obviously, in any of these methods now, I can access my internal value and set it to 1, which is not an issue and compiles fine. Obviously, if I change that internal to private, it's no longer accessible because now the variable is undeclared. Uh, but that is only because it's a private value. So if I then change that to public, once again, I can access it, but then all the whole outside world can as well. But in this case, what I actually do is I do want to make that private. Now, the reason behind this is I don't want anything to be able to modify my value outside the scope of bank. So now let's get rid of that right okie dokie so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some functionality to my first contract through our bank contract now with a bank um, what we simply would do in this case is have a value and now our value is um, also going to have um, a couple of methods associated to it like kind of like getters and setters but in this case we're going to be looking at say we'll, we'll we'll look at this in the sense of this is a bank account now, obviously, with Solidity, this um, wouldn't be bound to a specific address or anything along those lines. This is a more generic bank that everyone can add and remove from. I'll go into a bit more detail later on um, the sort of generics of being able to add and remove um, a values to a, bound to a specific address. But that's kind of a later tutorial. So for now, all we've got is a bank with a value and we first want to be able to deposit money in. So let's create a function called deposit. And this takes a uint and an amount. And we're not going to return anything. So that's all we need to do. And simply in this case, it's value add to amount. So in that, all it'll do is add value to add an amount to our existing value. Then what we need to do is then have the ability to withdraw value. So withdraw and then another amount and then simply this would be remove amount now i know you're probably saying you should probably check the value to see if it uh, actually has enough uh, 
enough balance left, but we'll come on to that in a little bit. So the last function we're going to have is also balance. And that is simply, oh, forgot to do my return statement, returns an event. And that returns our value. So we have our three methods. Now, obviously, if I publish um, the bank, I'm going to have access to those three methods and not going to have access to the value. But also in my first contract, I now have a balance, get age, get name, uh, sorry, a balance, a deposit and withdraw. I should always have the get age name and set age and set name. Now, what I want to do is also want to set a default value when the my first contract is initialized. And now to do this, I could do it one of two ways. I could set the value of private to say, for instance, 10, but that means everything that inherent in sort of inherits from the bank will also have the value of 10. So what I can do is I can create a constructor. Now with JavaScript, this is a very sort of basic principle thing of a constructor. You have the function, which is the same name as the object. Uh, let's specify a parameter to be passed in. So that's going to be our amount, which is going to be our initial amount. And we're simply just going to say the value equals the amount. So this means now that any sort of object that inherits from the original object can also specify a starting set value and every object that inherits can potentially have a different value. So in this case, our bank uh, for my first contract is going to have a starting value of 10. So now if I actually create my first contract and I get the balance, I'm starting off with a value of 10, which is great. So that is a basic um, sort of way of doing inheritance in the way of uh, just an extending another contract to add additional functionality. We can create an abstract um, contract as well, and we can do that with our bank. Obviously, we have predefined functionality here, but we can also add additional functionality, say function um, loan, for instance, and that returns a bool. And then we just simply state that that is our abstract method. Now we do that in a way that it doesn't throw an error that we have an implemented loan, but if you actually try and create it, we can't create it because there should be a pop-up. This contract does not implement all functions and thus cannot be created. So if I then go back into my first contract, we can simply just create a function called loan returns a Boolean and then return true. This isn't really adding any additional functionality, but at least it allows us now to create our function. So that is a, an abstract constraint. There is, if I'm correct, there is no keyword abstract within Solidity. So this is kind of how we have to get around it. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this function loan returns ball out of this method. And what I'm going to do now is create an interface. So moving on to the next part with, would be to look at interfaces. So to define an interface in Solidity, we can simply say interface. And this is going to just be, be a regulator. And within our regulator, we need some a couple of functions. So we're going to have a loan. And we're going to also have um, check value. Me. So with our check value, we're also going to pass in a uint and amount. Now the reason for our check value is basically to readdress that issue we raised before with withdrawal. We want to make sure that we actually have enough funds to actually withdraw. Now with this, we are going to implement this into our bank. So our bank should have the regulator functionality. So is regulator. So unlike other programming languages, which like for instance Java, which would be implements. Um, we still use the standard uh, operator is, but now obviously again, I can't create any of these because I have to implement the functionality. Now, if I'm correct, I can implement the functionality down within my first contract. So if I chuck that in and also add check value, uh, you went out. I can actually create my first contract because it's essentially an interface. Um, so it doesn't require the contract, the basically the functionality to exist in the uh, abstract uh, contract, which is what bank is, well, sort of is in this, uh, in this case. So I don't really want it there though. I wanted this to be generic functionality. So I'm actually going to move it up here. So now both classes should be able to compile because it's now part of our abstract class, which actually to be fair in this case, it's not actually abstract, but that's neither here nor there. So to check value, all we simply need to do in our check value 
is return um, a very simple case of amount um, is more than or equal to the value. So is the amount we're modifying more than or equal to our existing value? Because we're only going to use this in withdrawal. We don't really need to check deposit because it's already a value that's there. And all we're going to simply state is withdraw. If withdraw amount is essentially more than or equal to the value, simply reduce the value. Now, we could go along the lines of throwing an exception uh, here. Personally, I don't like to use the throw method at the moment because it actually consumes all the gas of the transaction. Um, you should really look at the revert assert and returns, I think it is. I have to double check that one. But that's going to be something I'm going to cover in a later lesson of sort of along the lines of error handling. So um, if you're looking for that, um, please check my other videos once I have published them all and I will cover that. So in this case, all we're doing is checking the amount. If the amount is applicable, we can then deduct it. So the loan, I'm going to simply state for a loan, if we have a positive value, we can we can make a loan essentially. So return if value is more than zero. So all we're doing is saying we will only give a loan to someone if they actually have money in their accounts so rather than someone who doesn't have anything or has a negative value, which in this case it, it can't be. So we've now covered all the basics of a, of a very simple sort of inheritance model. So we have our interface, which basically creates constraints of functionality that is required if something extends it. We have a contract, which is... I'm going to kind of keep throwing around the word abstract, but it's not in this case because it doesn't have a constraint bound to it. But we do have functionality. And then we have just a very basic implementation of the ability to basically extend some functionality from a predefined contract, which is obviously in this case, our, my first contract is extending the functionality of bank with a predefined value, of course. Now, that is basically it for the inheritance of Solidity. Um, like I said, I've got a couple more tutorials lined up. Obviously, one of them will be error handling. Um, another will be the actual publishing of a contract to the uh, blockchain. And I will also cover imports and libraries. I'll probably do a few more things in regards to access modification in regards to the actual blockchain and contract ownership and so forth. But I'm still trying to work on how I'm going to actually put those lessons together. So I've been James and this has been Learning Solidity. I hope you found this useful. Now, if you check out the description box, you should find all this code. Um, what I'll either do is I'll put it on Gist or most likely I might create a little GitHub repository so you can check this code out, play with it yourself and just, uh, you know, have a little mess around to see what you'd like to change and see if it helps you out. Now, if this has been helpful for you, give us a little thumbs up and subscribe and I'll try and keep the content rolling. But that has been it for now, and now I hope you found this useful, and I'll catch you next time.